Autumn in New York City, the crisp air, rustling leaves, and oh God, what is that smell? It smells like somebody threw up all over Brooklyn. Don't blame him, blame this tree, the ginkgo biloba. The ginkgo biloba is a weird tree. It was here before every flowering plant on Earth. It watched dinosaurs play under its leaves and then go extinct, or turn into pigeons. Out of the five categories of plants that make seeds, the ginkgo, just one species, is all on its own. It's kind of an evolutionary oddity. And their seeds smell awful. Beneath your feet, that squishy carpet oozes out the same chemical found in rancid butter. And that seems like a strange strategy if your goal is to make baby trees. Unfortunately for plants, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Now, unlike their airborne cousins, seeds need to be carried off so that they don't compete with their parents for nutrients and light. Fruits are plants' way of tricking animals into eating their seeds. So while we'll throw this away, for animals, everything goes in. And then later, everything comes out, complete with fertilizer. Besides my dog, who would eat a seed that smells like a dead animal? Well, the ginkgo is calling out to be eaten by a creature that's been dead for millions of years. We'll get back to that, but first, consider the avocado. Now, the avocados we eat today aren't that different from ones that grew in Mexico and Central America hundreds of thousands of years ago. We've got a thick skin, this nice, nutrient-rich, oily flesh, and right there in the middle, this ridiculously big seed. Something had to carry that seed away. The problem is that nothing alive in Mexico or Central America today could eat an avocado, seed and all, without choking to death or experiencing some serious discomfort. No one told the avocado, but it keeps making a fruit for an animal that doesn't exist anymore. Oh, hey, look, an avocado tree and a giant ground sloth. He's hungry and he's about the size of a moving truck, so reaching those avocados is no problem for him. Since avocado seeds contain toxins, he just chews them enough to break open the flesh. Down they go, skin, seeds, and all. And as he walks off, his guts go to work. And since avocados contain natural laxatives, it's not long before you get the idea. And every so often, one of those seeds could grow into a new tree. In fact, this is how it worked for a bunch of weird tropical fruits. The one thing they have in common is that the animals they used to depend on are all extinct. Now these living plant extinct animal relationships are what's called an evolutionary anachronism. Biologist Daniel Jansen and Paul Martin made this idea famous back in 1982. In fact, all of us carry evolutionary anachronisms. Goosebumps, our appendix, facial hair. These are traits that we evolved but we're no longer being selected for. Prehistoric megafauna, the animals that used to disperse all these seeds, went extinct by about 10,000 years ago. And since then, all these plants have just been limping along without them. Now normally these evolutionary anachronisms might be the first step to these plants going extinct. But since we agricultural apes have been planting orchards full of them for thousands of years, well, it's not really an issue. We've sort of sidestepped natural selection. The avocado should have gone the way of the dodo, except that we think it tastes good. Just like there's no reason the ginkgo biloba should exist, except that it gives really nice shade. It's kind of nice that we can do more than just drive things to extinction, that we can save a plant whose friends are all dead. So thanks to some ghosts of evolution, a ginkgo tree grows in Brooklyn, dropping stinky seeds and waiting for a creature that will never come. If you want to read more about weird fruits, evolutionary anachronisms, and extinct megafauna, check out the book Ghosts of Evolution by Connie Barlow. There's a link down below. And special thanks to Brian Switek, the internet's best paleontology writer, for special help with this episode, and to Mike Rugnetta from Idea Channel, because he emailed me asking about stinky fruits and started this whole thing. Thanks a lot, and stay curious. Let's say I sneak up behind you. Between your inner ear and your muscles tensing, that signal only has to travel through five nerves. The whole process is over before the rest of your brain is even aware what happened. You can't fight it. This is hardwired into your brain's anatomy. This so-called startle reflex is probably the fastest thought that you can have.